Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Damn, December sure was busy, huh? And January's already on its way out. We had so much to do during Dual Terminal Month, including a new living lore of Dual Terminal, hint hint, that we completely skipped over our 60k milestone! Thank you all again so much for showing your support, and I think it's time we did another special subject. You see, names have power. They're things that hold great personal significance, and stories both fiction and non-fiction feature people who cling to their ability to determine their identity. And also, it's fun when a character has the same name as you. So when Duel Academy's A student and wielder of the cyber style is one such person, well, Zanes have gotta stick together, right? Premiering in the August 2005 core set Cybernetic Revolution, Cyber Dragon shook the game to its very core, sporting amazing stats, an easy-to-use summoning condition, evolutions that would end the game in an instant, and much more. So, in honor of this latest channel achievement, let's dig deep and unlock the powers of the Machine Dragon, conquering both the light and the dark, so that we can create the perfect machine hybrid to achieve unlimited victory. It's time for Cyber Dragon Explained. Today's episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons, as well as the wonderful people over at Dragon Shield. Get the sleeves as strong as dragon scales and save 5% on your order by using coupon code GOLDENNOVA at checkout. So what's the deal with Cyber Dragon? Well, they're a series of light machine monsters who prioritize the beatdown, though aren't without additional tactics, using protective effects and negates to hold down the fort until you bring the house down. Many of them even take on the name Cyber Dragon while on the field, in the grave, or both, leading to some very interesting options. Thankfully though, its name changes an actual effect, not parenthetical reminder text, which would indicate that they're Cyber Dragons even during deck building. This means we're not running into a Harpy Ladies 1, 2, and 3 situation, so we can run as many of these as the ban list will allow. But what makes this monster so special? Let's take a look real quick since the rest of the video is going to center around it. Cyber Dragon is a level 5 monster with 2100 attack and 1600 defense, and if you control no monsters and your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. If you wanted a big monster, you had two options. One was relying on some kind of convoluted special summon chain, or normal summoning a small monster then tributing it off for a bigger one because without tribute summoning your monsters would float around the 2000 threshold and if you did tribute you risk that investment getting swept away by any kind of removal then cybernetic revolution happened and everything changed suddenly going second had a big upside should our opponent commit to any monster on their turn you can special summon cyber dragon for free right out of your hand while maintaining your regular normal summon letting you deal with their field and adding a bit of extra damage but this would cause a knock-on effect that would have outrageous ramifications moving forward not only was the ability to out just about any normal summon a huge shift in how people evaluated card choice it made one tribute monsters stronger now that you can set up and perform it all in one turn monarchs got that much more powerful letting you use their powerful on tribute summon effects with ease once synchro monsters were added to the game cyber dragon was the perfect non-tuner material to help make all the formats power cards being just the right size to pair with level 3 tuners to make monsters like stardust archfiend and uh, nerdier archfiend there's an entire other video's worth of info about how cyber dragon changed the game and it actually exists if you want more information on this, I would highly recommend checking out The Law Yu-Gi-Oh!, who has a fantastic series of videos about the history of the game. Start from 2005 and keep going from there, and you'll learn some wild facts about everyone's favorite mecha noodle. Cyber Dragon Hers is a level 1 monster with 100 attack and defense, and if this card is special summoned, you can make this card's level become 5 until the end of the turn. Also, you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except machine monsters. And if this card is sent to the grave, you can add one other Cyber Dragon from your deck or grave to your hand, but you can only use one effect of this card per turn, and only once per turn. But that shouldn't be a problem, we'll hardly ever be special summoning this and needing its level modulation, we have plenty of other ways to get to our rank 5s. The key effect here is fetching a Cyber Dragon, and this is where things get interesting. It only gets Cyber Dragon, not a monster with Cyber Dragon in its name. This means that when you fetch from the deck, you're only ever getting the original Cyber Dragon. But because many of our monsters change their name to Cyber Dragon once they hit the grave, those become viable options, letting you recycle your utility monsters after using them as fodder for some kind of tribute, discard, link summon, the whole nine yards. This has been a pretty fantastic addition to the deck since release, helping to keep your card economy healthy and your options flowing, making it a hearty inclusion. 
Cyber Dragon Natcher is a level 1 monster with 200 attack and defense, whose name becomes Cyber Dragon while on the field or in the grave. You can discard one other monster to special summon this card from your hand, and if this card is normal or special summoned, you can target a machine monster with 2100 attack or defense in your grave and special summon it. Also, you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except machine monsters. This is one of our more recent pieces of support, and goes a long way towards establishing our link plays. You can pitch one of those monsters with 2100 attack or defense, then pull it right back out of your grave on summon, all without using your normal summon. And while we do have plenty of on-theme choices, the only thing we're locked into is machine special summons, giving us a wealth of options to choose from. This monster's got a talent for swarming. You could say they have a knacked for it. Cyber Dragon Core is a level 2 monster with 400 attack and 1500 defense, and when this card is normal summoned, you can add a Cyber Speller Trap card from your deck to your hand. If only your opponent controls a monster, you can banish this card from your grave to special summon a Cyber Dragon monster from your deck, but you can only use one effect of this card per turn, and only once per turn. This was released in the Cyber Dragon Structure Deck, and is one of the reasons why it was so good. We'll be going over all these Cyber cards this can fetch later in the video, but let's just say you aren't wanting for good options. And while in the grave, it applies a kind of Cyber Dragon Summon, getting you monsters under the same conditions as OG Cyber Dragon right from the deck. And unlike hers, you can grab any member of the theme, giving you some more great options when you need to make a comeback, even if it is just to fetch the opponent's Ash Blossom. And of course, we can't forget its classic combo with Machine Duplication. Because it's under the attack threshold for that card and is treated as Cyber Dragon while on the field, that means you get two original dragons for free. It's the most obvious joke I could make, but it's earned the sentiment. This monster really is the core of our strategy. Proto Cyber Dragon is a level 3 monster with 1100 attack and 600 defense, whose name becomes Cyber Dragon while on the field. Not in the grave, only the field. This was a pretty early card that was meant to help give us more copies of the original Cyber Snake because the first fusion monsters required that monster specifically, so feeding three of them into End Dragon was a lot easier when you had more than three copies to work with. They also made for good fodder when utilizing Cyber Dragon's big design mishap, but they'll get their own segment real fast. And that's really all there is to them. No interesting applications, no wild history. It's just a monster with as little frills as you can get without being a straight up normal monster. Less of a pro toe and more of a noob trap. Armored Cyburn is a level 4 Wind Union monster with 0 attack and 2000 defense with the usual Union monster text, equipping to either a Cyber Dragon or a fusion monster that lists Cyber Dragon as material that you control. Once per turn, while equipped to a monster by this effect, you can target a face-up monster on the field, and the equipped monster loses exactly 1000 attack, even if this card leaves the field, and if it does, destroy that target. Yes, as Light Machines, Cyber Dragons are entitled to their requisite Union monster, though... This one being a wind feels like a design error, not gonna lie. Giving the theme hard removal isn't nothing, but as a deck that thrives on its attack power to close out games quickly, using attack as the currency is a little clunky. So clunky, in fact, that they had to make a recent retrain to replace it. It may be a wind monster, but that was certainly one harsh sigh burn. Cyber Dragon Joie is a level 4 monster with 1500 attack and 1000 defense, and if this card attacks an opponent's monster, it gains 300 attack during the damage step only. Once per turn, you can reveal a spell card in your hand, and this card's name becomes Cyber Dragon until the end phase, though thankfully it still counts as Cyber Dragon while in the grave regardless. But that's about its only saving grace, because it really just boils down to being a slightly better proto Cyber Dragon. No two ways about it. Cyber Dragon Dry is a level 4 monster with 1800 attack and 800 defense, and when this card is normal summoned, you can make all Cyber Dragons you currently control become level 5, but you can't special summon monsters during the turn you activate this effect except the machine monsters. And if this card is banished, you can target a Cyber Dragon you control, and it can't be destroyed by a battle or card effects this turn. Now, we do have a way to banish this card on demand, more on that later in the video. So this can be used to keep one of our Cyber Dragons safe, but remember, that monster has to have the original name for it to work. Other than that, the level modulation is kinda cool, but if we aren't spending a special summon on Hertz, you best believe we aren't wasting a normal summon on Dry. That makes two level modulation effects that we've passed over, but can we go for... three? 
Cyber Dragon Veer is a level 4 monster with 1100 attack and 1600 defense, and if you normal or special summon a Cyber Dragon except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand in defense position. And while on the field, each Cyber Dragon you control gains 500 attack and defense. Which is pretty funny, because once it benefits from its own boost, it actually has original Cyber Dragon's reversed stats. This is a pretty spiffy extender, giving you an extra body whenever you summon any of your Cyber Dragon doppelgangers. It's actually very specific about that. This means you can't summon this alongside many of our extra deck monsters, but that's kind of an edge in case you don't have to worry about. The important distinction is that it actually only applies to Cyber Dragons. But that being said, it is a wonderful boost should a monster qualify for it. But in most regards, it's just going to get folded into some other monster before we can make use of that. Regardless, whether you plan to use them to ladder up into a powerful monster or help supply the beat down with your frontline troops, Veer always has the right effect for the job. Tuned Cyber Dragon is a level 5 monster with 2100 attack and 1600 defense, can be special summoned from your hand if your opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters, cannot attack the turn it's summoned, and while you control Toon World and your opponent controls no Toon monsters, this card can attack your opponent directly. Yup, an old favorite from the Toon video rears its cartoonish proportions once again. In most circumstances, this is a little more than the Pegasus counterpart that they all tend to be, but this actually had some niche usages outside of Toon decks. On top of just being another Cyber Dragon, though notably does not have any kind of name replacement effects, this card is searchable by Toon Table of Contents, making it easy to get a hold of and deploy as a way to eat up your opponent's monsters. Bit of a spoiler here, but while Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon requires you to use original Cyber Dragon, Mega Fleet only needs an on theme monster, letting you fuse up monsters in the extra monster zones while getting you a free fusion. So, if you were any deck that wanted to get rid of your opponent's monster in the extra monster zone without spending many resources, you could just play Toon Table of Contents, search out Toon Cyber Dragon as needed, special summon it, and then contact fusion it away. It's very niche, and with the change to Master Rule Revision 4, only specific decks will play in a way where this matters, but know that you'll always have this very funny pick at your disposal. Okay, this section is about to get very, very bloated, but bear with me for a second. Things are going to get weird. Attack Reflector Unit is a normal trap card that tributes a Cyber Dragon monster to special summon a Cyber Barrier Dragon from your hand or deck. And Photon Generator Unit is a quick play spell card that tributes two Cyber Dragons to special summon a Cyber Laser Dragon from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So we have these Cyber Dragons that you have to summon in a specific way, but they don't live in the extra deck. They have to come out of your main deck and do require a very specific spell or trap card to work, and you would think that monsters summoned under these conditions would be supremely powerful, and we would have thrown you for a loop. Cyber Barrier Dragon is a level 6 monster with 800 attack and 2800 defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and cannot be special summoned except with attack reflector unit. Once per turn, while this card is in attack position, your opponent's next attack is negated. You don't choose it, it's just the next attack. And Cyber Laser Dragon is a level 7 monster with 2400 attack and 1800 defense that also can't be normal summoned or set, and this one must be special summoned by the effective Photon Generator unit. And once per turn, you can destroy a monster with attack or defense equal to or higher than the attack of this card. This means that Laser can deal with basically anything, either by battle or its own effect, but why does it have a restriction on it at all at that point? I mean, you pay 3 cards to get this onto the board for crying out loud. But hey, at least it has removal. At least Laser Dragon has an attack stat to be proud of. Barrier Dragon was just made to suffer. It's got a huge defense stat, but the only way it can negate attacks is by keeping it in attack position, leaving it to be run over by, uh, anything worthwhile. Now, the sting of spending real Cyber Dragons on these is mitigated a bit if you think about using Proto Cyber Dragon, because their only shtick is being Cyber Dragons on the board, but that just means you're playing all these bricks, the unsummonable monsters, the otherwise unusable spells and traps, just to get out these, at best, mid-monsters. And honestly, everything's a tiny cyber dragon nowadays anyway, so there's not really a point. Now, to give credit where credit is due, this is actually an interesting design space to explore in Cyber Dragons, especially since the extra deck wasn't as expansive as it was now. When it came to making distinct monsters and ways to get those monsters, we didn't have a lot of choices. But I hope too raw that the lessons learned in this experiment help them to avoid doing stuff like this in the future. Heck, they don't even have the good sense to be countered as Cyber Dragon anywhere. Despite what it says on their card names, these do not deserve the the title of precious little units. 
Malefic Cyber End Dragon is a level 10 dark monster with 4000 attack and 2800 defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and must be special summoned from your hand by banishing a Cyber End Dragon from your extra deck. There can only be one Malefic on the field, other monsters you control can't attack, and if there's no field spell on the field, destroy this card. This one's more of a Malefic card than a Cyber Dragon one. It has little to no synergy with the rest of our theme, except being a much easier to summon 4k beatstick, but without piercing battle damage, you're getting a big body for relatively minor bonuses. Heck, the whole point of the deck is to fight with a bunch of your monsters, and attack with a lot of them. Being restricted to only fighting with one kinda defeats the purpose. Oh, and on top of that, this also isn't treated as a regular Cyber Dragon anywhere. This is like the energy of Cyber Dragon, but in an opposite direction, so, uh, I guess good job on getting that part of the assignment done, Paradox. Alright, we've covered all the main deck Cyber Dragons, now it's time to explore the extra deck, and all the fierce creations that lie within. Though, it should be noted that we no longer assume these monsters get to change their name to Cyber Dragon anywhere. Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon is a level 5 dark fusion monster with 2100 attack and 1600 defense, requiring two or more Cyber Dragon monsters as material, and a fusion summon of this card can only be done with the above fusion material. When this card is fusion summoned, you can target spell or trap cards on the field up to the number of fusion material used for its summon and destroy them, and once per turn, you can send up to two light machine monsters from your deck to the graveyard, and if you do, for each monster sent, this card gains an additional attack during each battle phase this turn. So at the very least, when this hits board, it's a Twin Twister, gives you a double Foolish Burial, and gains extra attacks that do not need to be on monsters. Good lord, this card is powerful. It's easy to summon, has an immediate impact when it hits the field, it's aggro and setup all rolled into one. Heck, you can send hers and any other Cyber Dragon that takes on its name, letting you trigger hers to get that monster, so it's effectively also Rota for Cyber Dragons. And you know we're grabbing core off that for the free Cyber Speller Trap Search. This card is a menace, and does for Modern Cyber Dragon what Twin Cyber Dragon did for the Old Guard. Despite looking like what happens when you leave a couple of Cyber Dragons lying around together, eventually they'll get all tangled up. Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon is a level 8 dark fusion monster with zero attack and defense, requiring Cyber Dragon and one or more machine monsters as material, and this card itself can't be used as fusion material. So having a big monster with zero stats seems a little strange, but this is where things get good. It must first be special summoned from the extra deck by sending the above cards from either field to the grave. You do not use polymerization, and its original attack becomes equal to a thousand times the number of fusion material used for its summon. Yeah, that's right. You may have seen Contact Fusion before, but Fortress Dragon weaponizes it. From its printing all the way until now, any deck that ends on a hefty chunk of machines has to be wary of this, because at any point, the opponent could drop just a single Cyber Dragon, or any of the monsters that take on its name, and eat up that whole field without ever activating an effect, and not a single destruction left in their wake. And you end up with a monster that's at least 2,000 attack, that can really take over the game if your opponent overextended. And if all that wasn't enough to endear you to it, this easily has the goofiest design out of any Cyber Dragon monster. <laughs> How do you fit all those mini Cyber Dragons into those discs? It just cannot be done! Cyber Twin Dragon is a level 8 fusion monster with 2800 attack and 2100 defense, requiring two Cyber Dragons as material. Its fusion summon can only be performed with the above material, so no fusion substitutes, and it can make two attacks during each battle phase. During the game's early days, having such a big double attacker was huge, but not necessarily for the reasons you might think. It was actually one of the best targets to summon off of Cyberstein during its pre-banning days, letting you trade 5000 life points to deal approximately 5800 damage, before any bonuses were applied, and any such boost would get double value because of Twin Dragon's double attack. In fact, it shares this infamy with its upgraded form, Cyber End Dragon, a level 10 fusion monster with 4000 attack and 2800 defense, requiring three Cyber Dragons as material. It can also only be fusion summoned with the above material, and deals piercing battle damage. So while the ceiling wasn't as high as Twin in terms of damage, it could get through an opponent trying to hide behind a defense position monster in an attempt to blunt your offensive push, especially if the monster couldn't be destroyed by battle. And if you used the Cyberstein strategy and paired them with the incredible equip spell Megamorph, both of these were effectively OTKs in a can. Because of this, while their usage has fallen off since their heyday, these are still easily the two most iconic of the fusion monsters in Cyber Dragons, which makes sense. Two heads are better than one, but three is just showing off. 
Chimera Tech Over Dragon is a level 9 dark fusion monster with question mark attack and defense, requiring Cyber Dragon and one or more machine monsters as material, and must be fusion summoned. If this card is fusion summoned, send all other cards you control to the grave. This card's original attack and defense become equal to the number of material used for its summon times 800, and each turn, this card can attack your opponent's monsters a number of times equal to the number of fusion material used for its fusion summon. As far as early threats go for machine decks, this one was huge. Combined with early Future Fusion's ability to vent every monster out of your deck on activation because of this, Overload Fusion became a way to plug this with 5 plus material, so if your opponent had a good chunk of attack position monsters, you just had game. But it's pretty much the definition of a glass cannon. With no protection and its propensity for nuking your own field, Overdragon stands alone, and that's a bad place to be when a single Book of Moon can ruin your entire day. Still. It's hard to pass up such a strong instant win button, especially if it can grab you a game you'd otherwise have lost. And the opportunity cost is honestly pretty low, though I am noticing an issue with the name. Do they know that chimeras are made of a bunch of different animals? Shouldn't we be bringing in some other strange cyber monsters into this conglomeration? Chimera Tech Mega Fleet Dragon is a level 10 dark fusion monster with zero attack and defense, requiring a cyber dragon monster and one or more monsters in the extra monster zone as material. It cannot be used as fusion material, and must first be special summoned from your extra deck by sending the above cards from either field to the grave, and the original attack of this card becomes 1200 times the number of material used for it. We got a bit of a teaser for this back when we talked about Toon Cyber Dragon, but here it is, a fortress dragon for the modern era. Back when Master Roll 4 was at its height, it was guaranteed that the EMZ would be filled with at least one monster or another, and so Mega Fleet showed up as an answer to deal with any monster that made its home there, be it powerful towers or an annoying enabler. However, this did not lead to the kind of explosive usage as Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon had. Even allowing you to use its other forms didn't really help much because the baseline quality for playable monsters at that point in the game meant that not everyone was just teching in Cyber Dragons for the hell of it. However, as an on-theme option, this is pretty good, giving you a way to pull a mini Fortress Dragon maneuver depending on your matchup. It's kind of like having a very specific Kaiju that lives in your extra deck, and that's not to be discounted, but I am concerned about its ability to act as effective air suppression. It seems to have a big pair of wings, but it's largely being held up by magnetic flotation rings, and those things get smashed more than you might think, so be careful. If you see a turtle with a catapult, just Walk away. Cyber Eternity Dragon is a level 10 fusion monster with 2800 attack and 4000 defense, requiring a Cyber Dragon monster and two machine monsters as material. If you have any number of machine fusion monsters in your grave, your opponent can't target this card with card effects, nor can they destroy it with card effects, and if this fusion summoned card you control is sent to your graveyard by an opponent's card, you can special summon a Cyber Dragon from your hand, deck, or grave. You can also banish this card from your grave, and this turn, your opponent can't target fusion monsters you control with card effects. Also, they can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. This is another interesting piece of support that doesn't get a lot of glory, but does have a small niche. Despite it having reversed Cyber End Dragon stats, 2800 is still a pretty formidable attack stat, and getting another machine fusion into your grave to get the protections isn't that outlandish. Heck, you could use those effects to get this card straight into the graveyard, that way you can banish this to provide all of your fusions with its protections for a turn. It's not going to be anything more than a nifty option to summon off of some truly impressive fusion spells we'll get into later, and it's honestly kind of cool to see that, in an archetype all about offense, they now have a really solid defensive option. But, I don't know, eternity? That's a bit long. Uh, let's start with longevity and go from there. Cyber Dragon Nova is a rank 5 Xyz monster with 2100 attack and 1600 defense, requiring two level 5 machine monsters as material. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card, then target a Cyber Dragon in your grave and special summon that target. And once per turn, as a quick effect, you can banish a Cyber Dragon from your hand or face up from your monster zone to give this card 2100 attack until the end of this turn. And if this card in your possession is sent to the grave by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon a machine fusion monster from your extra deck. This was another addition from the Cyber Dragon Structure deck, but never really got its time in the spotlight. True, it turned any two regular Cyber Dragons into 
well, two Cyber Dragon sized monsters, uh, maybe you'd grab a core instead for the search, but it can also grow to monstrous heights thanks to its attack boosting effect, while making it very unhelpful for your opponent to remove it via card effects, because then you'd have access to any of your good Cyber Dragon fusion monsters, as well as a few other goodies, not least of which being one of Zane's brothers, Cyrus's big boss monsters, Barbaroid. A double attacker that negates the effects of what it fights on a 4K body ain't nothing. But that's really about the top end of this. Sadly, a lot of machine fusion monsters have restrictions keeping you from just ripping them out of your extra, but since one of them literally wins through the game, I guess it's fine. But that's not where it would stay for long, because with the release of Breakers of Shadow, we got Cyber Dragon Infinity, a rank 6 Xyz monster with 2100 attack and 1600 defense, requiring 3 level 6 light machine monsters as material. But once per turn, you can also Xyz summon this card by using a Cyber Dragon Nova you control as material, transferring its material to this card. It gains 200 attack for each material attached to it, and once per turn, you can target a face up attack position monster on the field and attach it to this card as material and also once per turn, when a card or effect is activated as a quick effect, you can attach a material from this card to negate the activation and if you do, destroy it. So if Cyber Dragon changed the game back in GX, Infinity did something similar for extra deck monsters during Arc V. Any deck that can string together two level 5 machines? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. The script just says, mmm, after that. Mmm, yummy extra deck monsters. Any deck that can string together two level 5 machines were doing it with aplomb, but its big application was when combined with Teller Knight Tolmaeus, letting any rank 4 monster stack three monsters into the centaur, then ranking those up into Nova, hi, that's me, before going right into Infinity. It was a combat threat with non destruction removal that made it bigger and, more importantly, was a repeatable omni-negate. But, also like regular Cyber Dragon, this has also fallen off because of power creep. Even with Tolmaeus legal again, it just wasn't feasible to sink three monsters into only one that does one negate per turn. And that should tell you just how far this game has gone. That being said, we can make it much easier without as much hassle, and still makes for a fantastic anchor for our board. And hey, even if this card doesn't see much play nowadays, its visage has been stamped on Infinite Impermanence, which has been a staple since release, giving it infinite replayability. Cyber Dragon Seeger is a Link 2 monster with 2100 attack, requiring two machine monsters, including Cyber Dragon, as material. This card's name becomes Cyber Dragon while on the field or in the grave, making it the only extra deck one with that effect. During each battle phase, if this card hasn't declared an attack, as a quick effect, you can target a machine monster you control with 2100 or more attack, and for the rest of the turn, that monster gains 2100 attack and defense. Also, neither player takes any battle damage from attacks involving this monster. So the skinny on this is that, while Seeger can still help run monsters over, by giving that boost, Seeger can't actually help deal damage that turn, but everything else can still lay the smackdown, and this comes in double handy with our multi-attackers. The primary recipient of this is going to be Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon, because if you thought a double attacking 2800 body was dangerous, you haven't truly tasted fear until you're staring down a 4200 triple attacker. And it still stands as a way to keep your life points safe, because even if it can't do any damage, it can still grow itself to 4200 to hold the line. Another big benefit is that, when it comes to its material, only one has to be Cyber Dragon, which means it plays well with any machine theme we tech in. The last benefit is that, as an attack boost that lives in our extra deck, it's accessible at many points in the game, meaning you don't need to play as many gimmicky attack boosters in the main deck, keeping your engine lean and mean. Lynx may not be the deck's bread and butter, but this one is a real winner. Alright, that's all of our monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. Cyber Emergency is a normal spell card that adds a light machine monster that can't be normal summoned or set, or a cyber dragon monster from your deck to your hand. If the activation of this card in its owner's possession was negated by your opponent's card effect and sent to the grave, you can discard a card to add this card to your hand. Now, you can only activate this card once per turn, but if that activation was negated as per its second effect, that means you can activate the retrieved copy right away, which is very funny. It effectively disincentivizes your opponent from interacting with this and just letting you get Get your search, but don't get too comfy, because it doesn't play around everything. 
only activation negations are punished. But if the effect just negates the effect itself, like with Ash Blossom, then no dice. But that doesn't stop the card from being really good. It grabs Cyber Dragon monsters, so that's the whole theme opened up to you right there. But it also gets a number of Cyber Dragon related monsters. We'll be covering some of those in the next episode. This means we have a Rota that helps pivot between which dragons we need to fix up our hands and get our combos going. But, because it's generic, that means it's only natural that this card has seen so much success not just in this deck, but also Drytrons, an archetype made entirely of light machines that cannot be normal summoned or set. Which hasn't done anything to explain why this art has a fighter jet surrounded by wyvern dragons. Uh, can we get some backstory on this? Cyber Repair Plant is a normal spell card that you can activate if you have a Cyber Dragon in your grave. You can activate one of these effects, but if you have three or more Cyber Dragons in your grave at activation, you can use both and resolve them in sequence. Either add a Light Machine Monster from your deck to your hand, or target a Light Machine Monster in your grave and shuffle it into the deck. That's right, we have a second Rota, though this one requires a little bit more setup. But it comes with that little bit of recycling that helps keep our play sequences going. Not to mention it searches any Light Machine to cover any splashed monsters. Two of the big ones being Galaxy Soldier for free level 5 material and Kaiju Jizukiru. It's a great piece of support, especially once you get to the mid game, and I greatly appreciate that it shows Cyber Dragon with the crusts taken off. Cyber Rev System is a normal spell card that special summons a Cyber Dragon from your hand or grave, and it can't be destroyed by card effects. Take note that this only summons Cyber Dragon, so it's only getting the OG out of your hand, but any of the name mimickers in grave are valid targets as well. The art even gives you a little hint. If it works for hers, it works for Rev System. And then they get effect destruction immunity, because why not? This saw some pretty widespread playback and toss format as one of the game's one card orchest combos. You'd normal summon core, grab rev system, link core into Almirage, then play that rev system to get back the core, because it is treated as cyber dragon in the grave, and there you go, that's two monsters with different names making a nightmare link monster going into mermaid, and well, I have a whole Orcus video for that if you want the rest of that combo. But that's not the extent of its usefulness, at least for us. Because we're looking at a non-once per turn Monster Reborn, and while very few of our boss monsters are Cyber Dragons themselves, Seeker actually is, so we can bring it back as either a powerful damage enabler or as Link 2 material for other monsters, to say nothing of the value we get off of Reborning Core, Hers, or Naxter. We may not do a lot of syncing, but this card is really going to help us rev it up! Evolution Burst is a normal spell card that you can activate if you control Cyber Dragon. Target a card your opponent controls and destroy that target, but Cyber Dragon can't attack the turn you activate this effect. This is another of the game's signature attack cards, which are very flavorful, but as far as utility goes, this is pretty low. Back in the day, yeah, maybe being able to trade some attacks for spot removal of any of your opponent's cards was something to consider, but today, not a chance. The upside is, because many of your bosses don't count as Cyber Dragon, their attacks aren't actually impeded, but it's not searchable, and the potential downsides just don't make up for it. But what if I told you that this was only the beginning of the evolution and Burst. It's a normal spell card that adds a copy of Overload Fusion from your deck to your hand. If you fusion summon a monster this turn using Overload Fusion, using six or more monsters as material, that monster can attack a number of times each battle phase this turn, up to the number of monsters used as fusion material. But for the rest of the turn after this card resolves, you can't special summon monsters except with spell effects. This means we can still use cards like Rev System and Fusion spells, but I guess I have to let you know what Overload Fusion actually is, so real quick, it's a normal spell that fusion summons any dark machine monster from your extra deck by banishing its material from the field or grave. On its own, it's a pretty swell miracle fusion. Though we have to be careful, not only does this not work with many of our fusions as they're light, some of them just can't be made with this, and almost all of them have a maximum material requirement under 6. I think the idea here is to let Overdragon actually attack directly if you reach that threshold, because otherwise it can only multi-attack monsters. And you kind of want to make that with Overload Fusion anyway, so it's not a terrible situation to be in, though it does mean you're down to only summoning from spells this turn, as well as wiping your own board. This will continue to have applications in the following video, as well as hilarious synergy with Gold Pride Pinballer, but as it stands, I'm gonna have to ask Cyber Dragons to back off all the evolutions for a bit. Darwin needs a break. Cyber Eternal is a quick play spell card that targets a machine cyber fusion monster in your grave, and either returns it to the extra deck, or special summons it, ignoring summoning conditions. And if any number of machine cyber fusion monsters you control would be 
be destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can banish this card from your grave instead. Effectively, this is a reborn for our big monsters, but remember, even if it ignores summoning conditions, they have to have been summoned properly first. But what's funny is, our on theme fusion monsters don't actually have any effects that would keep them from being summoned with generic revival cards. So ignoring the summoning conditions is going to be much more important to the cyber darks that make up the bulk of next episode, but does mean we still have a quick play reborn for both, with an extra layer of destruction protection on top of it to keep your bosses safe. Combine that with searchability via core, and you've got yourself a pretty safe investment. Nothing lasts forever, but with Cyber Eternal, you can get pretty close. Cyber Load Fusion is a quick play spell card that fusion summons a fusion monster from your extra deck that lists a cyber dragon monster as material by shuffling the fusion material listed on it into the deck from among your cards on the field and or face up banished cards, but monsters you control can't attack for the rest of the turn except fusion summoned monsters. Now this is a game changer. A lot of banishing goes into modern cyber dragon plays, so being able to shuffle all those back for a big monster is keen, especially Rampage Dragon, because you only need the two as a base with more material giving you more back row removal to say nothing of the fact that it takes cyber dragon monsters so you don't need to worry about your monsters not taking on cyber dragon's name in the banished zone heck you can do all this during the battle phase if you need to use your on field material to get even more damage out of them and again this is searchable off of cyber dragon core so you're never far from a ludicrously powerful play and will be the reason for a lot of your wins you could say that it's a cyber load bearing fusion. Cybernetic Fusion Support is a quick play spell card that has you paying half your life points, and once, if you fusion summon a machine fusion monster this turn, you can banish monsters from your hand, field, and or grave as fusion material. That's a steep cost, but it's basically chain material in a usable fashion. Remember just a moment ago when we said there was going to be a lot of banishing? Well, this card is going to be a part of it. There's hardly a limit to what we can do with this outside of having to make a machine fusion, which we were going to be doing anyway. So we could bin a ridiculous number of monsters for the summon of Chimera Tech Overdragon, then use Cyber Load to scoop up all that material to make Rampage Dragon. This is a deceptively powerful card, turning any of our fusion effects into a win condition all its own. And raw help us if an effect like this leaks out into other mechanics. I do not want to see cybernetic link support. Cybernetic Zone is a quick play spell card that selects a face-up machine fusion monster you control and banishes it until the end phase of this turn. When it returns to the field, double its attack, but during your next standby phase, destroy it. This is, uh, not it, Chief. Blinking out to avoid interaction is one thing, but because this puts it on a timer, it's not exactly going to let you keep that monster. Heck, the way the phases are established, you'll never get to take advantage of the double attack in the battle phase. Now, you can provide destruction protection to keep the monster on board, and if you just passively have that, then this gets a little better. But if you have to jump through hoops to make this work, it's going to take you out of the experience, which is the opposite of being in the zone. Super Strident Blaze is an equipped spell card that you can only equip to a machine fusion monster. Your opponent can't activate cards or effects during your battle phase, and at the end of the damage step, if the equipped monster attacked an opponent's monster, you can banish a Cyber Dragon monster from your grave so the equipped monster can attack an opponent's monster in a row, and your other monsters can't attack the turn you activate this effect. This is the... third? signature attack card we've covered so far, and while it's not the worst, it is still pretty bad. Locking your opponent out of battle phase effects is pretty good, but the multi-attack locking out your other monsters kind of blows because we're already accomplishing that with other cards. If we could search this, or we had some other kind of synergy with equipped spells, that might change some things. But we're gonna need a little upgrade to actually make this Strident Blaze actually super. Cybernetic Overflow is a normal trap card that has you banishing cyber dragons with different levels from among your hand, grave, and or face up field, then destroying an equal number of cards your opponent controls. And if this card on the field is destroyed by a card effect, you add a cyber speller trap card from your deck to your hand. This promotes a play pattern where you hold this as long as possible, waiting for your opponent to try and pop this to get the most value, then retaliating with a huge retributive blast. It plays to the multiple levels of monsters you'll be using, acting as a kind of sword soul blackout or Icarus attack with upside. This is easily a good one of to grab off of core in case you need the defenses, but I've gotta ask why this card that very much cares about levels is being headlined by Seeger. You know, the Link Monster with no levels? Cybernetic Revolution is a normal trap card that tributes a Cyber Dragon to special summon a fusion monster from your extra deck that lists a Cyber Dragon monster as material, but it can't attack directly and is destroyed during the end phase of the next turn. This is... Kind of funky. 
Once again, grabbing this off of core does set this up all on its own, because it has the name, and while you can't attack directly, you can still do some heinous damage with cards like Twin or End if your opponent has the monsters to fight them, but then you lose it if you don't close it out. I feel like we have quicker and stronger ways to deploy our extra deck threats, so I'm gonna give this one a pass. I just hope it doesn't have any hard feelings over that. Uh, I am gonna have to look at it every time I try to find the core set, Cybernetic Revolution. Cyber Network is a continuous trap card that's destroyed during the third standby phase after activation. Once per turn, if Cyber Dragon is on the field, you can banish a Light Machine monster from your deck, and when this card is sent from the field to the grave, special summon as many banished Light Machine monsters as possible, and if you do, destroy all spell and trap cards you control. Monsters that are special summoned by this effect can't activate their effects, and you can't conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this effect. This is kinda cool, but is a bit too clunky to see modern play. The idea is that you're loading up your banished zone with Cyber Dragon so that once this pops, you get a boatload of monsters. And because it grabs all banished light machines, not just ones banished by its own effect, you can still special summon cards that you banished before activating this card. The problem is all the drawbacks. You have to give up all your back row, admittedly this will combo with Cybernetic Overflow, but that's a big ask, keeps you from using the battle phase if this triggers on your own turn, and you don't even get to activate any of their effects on the field. Honestly, this is more trouble than it's worth, which is what the designers must have thought as well, since this is another example of them just reusing card art. Though I do think this is an example of it actually working. They do have a little filter on them, so it looks like a real database of Cyber Dragon forms, so I'll give this one a pass, but I've got my eyes on you. Cybernetic Hidden Technology is a continuous trap card, and when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can send to grave a Cyber Dragon you control, or a fusion monster you control that lists Cyber Dragon as fusion material, then target the attacking monster and destroy that target. This is, um... This is just uh, an old piece of bad support. There's not much else to say here. After the first activation, it's completely telegraphed and doesn't really help keep your monsters safe regardless. It just trades them. Honestly, give this one a wide berth. It turns out that the tech is hidden because it was all made of sand. All right, so that's all the proper Cyber Dragon cards. Now here's a little combo that'll get you to 8,000 points of damage at the push of a button. Sadly, it is a three card combo. The good news is two are easy to get a hold of. One is any monster, and the other is Cyber Dragon Core, which you have six copies of thanks to Cyber Emergency. The bad news is our last card is Machine Duplication, a normal spell we can only search with Triple Tactics Thrust, and even so, you might not even be able to activate it right away, so it is a little rough. That being said, it does help end the game. Normal Summon Core, using its effect to add Cyber Load Fusion from your deck to your hand. Then, play Machine Duplication, targeting that core. Because its name is Cyber Dragon, you can summon two fully-fledged Cyber Dragons from your deck. Next, use Cyber Load Fusion, shuffling a core and a Cyber Dragon into your deck to summon Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon, taking out two of your opponent's back row if needed. From here, use Rampage to send two Light Machine monsters from your deck to the grave, specifically Cyber Dragons Hers and Natchter. This will trigger Hers' effect to put a Cyber Dragon from your grave back into your hand, and hey, Naxter's name is actually Cyber Dragon! Wow! Then, we're gonna take that random monster card in our hand and pitch it for Naxter to summon itself, linking it and our remaining Cyber Dragon into Seeger. Use its boost on Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon, and there you go! That's 12,800 damage on board. Now, that's pretty good for turn two, but if you have no battle phase, attack power doesn't really do much. No worries though, we've got another combo to give you some interaction. You actually only need two cards for this one, the Core and the Machine Duplication. For Core, you're gonna wanna add Cyber Emergency to put Cyber Dragon Veer into your hand. Then use Machine Duplication, summoning the two Cyber Dragons, which will summon Veer out of your hand. Link Veer and Core into Seeger, overlay the two Cyber Dragons into Nova, then stack Infinity on top of it, giving you an Omni Negate and a big attack buff to weather the following turn until you can mount a counter attack. Okay, so that's some good info on Cyber Dragons, but what do we do with them? Well, having a bunch of battle-oriented monsters means we want to be on the beatdown as much as possible. This means aiming to go second, playing as many equalizers as possible to reduce our opponent's options while we set up our OTK, as well as including countermeasures against methods our opponent will try to use to stop us. We'll also want to keep a small defensive suite on hand, we can't go second all the time, and with cards like Infinity and Overflow helping to turn the tides, we have a good chance of making it to the battle phase. So what can we play to help them out? 
Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon has long since lost its luster as a prominent board breaker, but we're in a unique position nowadays to put the fear of the contact fusion back into our opponent. Clockwork Knight not only gives us a big machine-wide buff, not only does it give our opponent a big board debuff, it turns everything into a machine so our Cyber Dragon monsters that take on the proper name can now scoop up our opponent's entire board, and the more they've extended, the bigger your fortress gets. This also has some funny applications like turning Core into a one-card Seeger. Normal the Core, get Rev System, then link into Salaman Great Almirage using Rev System to reborn the Core. Now that Almirage is a machine and not a Cybers monster, it's now valid material for Seeger. Clockwork Knight is also fantastic when it comes to splashing in other themes. If the Machina, Infinitrack, or any of the new Ancient Gear cards call out to you, this in the grave plus a discard puts any of them into your hand. It's pretty bonkers. Now, it's hard to talk about a machine deck that focuses on aggression and not bring up limiter removal. From a competitive mindset, I can't really recommend this card anymore. All it does is provide an admittedly large stat boost that can close out a game out of nowhere, but it doesn't generate any value. We already have plenty of safer and more consistent ways to generate damage, and if something goes wrong and you can't end the game, then you can say goodbye to your entire board shortly before your opponent smashes into you, thanking you for your open board. That being said, this card is rad as hell, so if you're looking for style points, this is easily the top choice. As a deck with a lot of prominent fusions, fusion deployment seems pretty nifty, but since we lean on Xyz and Link monsters, shutting those off for a free Cyber Dragon isn't very forward thinking. A much better option is Fusion Armament. It pulls the monster from the extra deck or grave, and remember, a lot of our monsters are Cyber Dragon while in the grave. Sadly, it does shut off the effect, so we don't get a Natchter Summon or Core Search. Heck, their names even stop being Cyber Dragon because of that effect negation. This can still get you material for all kinds of extra deck summons, but you may want to consider just running Monster Reborn instead if that's a concern. Power Bond is a card that shows up in the anime from time to time associated with the Truesdale Brothers, and it does have some merit to it. Being a fusion spell that also doubles the attack of the monster permanently at the expense of losing its base value as life points once during the end phase is pretty solid, and we'll see that come up again next episode, as a lot of cards actually directly support this. But as far as we go, it's still a solid option. It gets Rampage Dragon as big as it would be with a Seeker boost, Twin Dragon up to that 5600 attack, and can potentially get an 8000 attack monster with piercing if you manage to get Cyber End Dragon. As far as fusion options go, it's basically an OTK in a can and shouldn't be overlooked. Born from Draconis is an interesting normal trap card that acts as kind of a Hail Mary. It lets any of our light machine monsters effectively become Cyber Eltanen, with you getting bigger stats the more you banish, and topping it off with a tower's level protection. The problem is that the only Cyber Dragon that fits into this mold are Barrier and Laser, and while having a higher attack stat on Barrier isn't too shabby, making Laser as big as possible defeats its own purpose. Oh, and you know, you'd have to be stuck playing them. There are a number of other monsters that fit the bill for this, but we aren't really touching them, so suffice it to say, this card is kind of a dud on theme. This is a very new card at time of recording, so I'm not sure what its ramifications will be for the future, but Psychic Processor does seem interesting. As support for Psychics, Cybers, and importantly for us, Machines, being able to e tell you this out at a moment's notice and then dropping two of our Cyber Dragons out of our hand is a great way to turbo out our plays without using our normal summon. Keep an eye out for this one, this is gonna get wild. As for a silly tech pick, I've got something that goes in every deck that has monsters that mimic the name of a particular monster. Phalanx Pike. The equipped monster gets a whopping 900 attack bonus for each monster in both graves that shares a name with it. Normally, this caps out at 1800 with your own cards, which is pretty big, but since we have upwards of 5 or even 6 Cyber Dragons in the grave at any given time, this boosts us up by a staggering 45 to 5400. Who needs all this space age tech when a pointy stick will get the job done just fine? All right, that's all the info we have on Cyber Dragons, but how does it stack up against the Nova scale? Novelty. When you're known as the monster that caused the first big paradigm shift in the game, I think a high novelty rating is warranted. It wasn't just that it had high attack, but its ease of summon, level, 
type and attribute were all important factors in its initial and ongoing success, shaping the competitive world around it. And while the big body that negates wasn't a new concept by the time Infinity rolled around, it did set a new standard of power and accessibility. Cyber Dragon hasn't made quite as much of a splash in modern times, but its history speaks for itself, especially with all of the go big, go wide, and smash face strategies that have emerged in its wake. So Cyber Dragon gets a 5 in novelty. Objectivity If this video was being made closer to this card's release, this would be ranking very low. It cannot be understated just how much this one level 5 monster changed how the game was played. Nowadays, though, it's pretty tame. It is possible to go for game in one turn, but nowadays, very few decks can't do that. Many of its combos require a huge glut of cards, so it's not very economically efficient, and while it does have a few tricks to call its own nowadays, I'm not sure I'd call it broken. It can be a sizable threat if you run into it at a tournament, and a skilled player will wring out a lot of value from it, but in a broader sense, it's not much to write home about. So Cyber Dragon's got a 5 in objectivity. Versatility on a similar wavelength, this would probably get a perfect 5 back in the day. No deck would say no to an easily summoned 2100 point monster that could be leveraged for tributes, synchro summons, the works. But versatility isn't just about if a card can be played in other decks, but if other decks even want to play it, and the niche Cyber Dragon occupied just doesn't exist anymore. All the things that it did were the things the game would grow into over time. And while it is the beneficiary of a wealth of machine support in the game, it's just not the same as it used to be. So right now, this card is a 2 in versatility. Awesomeness. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend otherwise. This deck rocks. It's got big monsters, big damage, cool designs, great infrastructure, a headlining place in the anime's history, multiple extra deck types, and did I mention that it does huge damage? I can't imagine a cooler theme to be piloting than this, so I'm going to be giving Cyber Dragons a 5 in awesomeness, giving it a total of 17 on the Nova scale, a well-deserved score. And that's all I have to say about Cyber Dragons, but that's not everything. Not only do we have the rest of the miscellaneous cyber monsters to cover, we also have to explore the darker side of Dual Academy's A Student. So don't forget to hit that sub button to catch the next episode, throw me a like if you liked the video, and share it around with somebody you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode is brought to you by my patrons, as well as the wonderful people over at Dragon Shield. Get the sleeves as strong as dragon scales and save 5% on your order by using the coupon code GOLDENNOVA at checkout. Today's episode was also brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commanders Frankie and Marluxia as a Girl, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Ada Basilisk, Adam Zajdel, Andrew Newman, Kane Senpai, Christopher Fuss, Clockswork, Dark Dragon X830, Emini Chan, Eric, Aaron the World Breaker, Garland Chaos, Green Knight, Great Big Pillock, Hair Bear, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Howling Zangetsu, Iron Zero, Iskander 711, Carp, Mana Charge, Marion James E. Picotta, Mega Combi, Millennia Asta, Muzuki Clark, Nathan Vig, Natiel Lee Alexander, Orozco 09096, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Red Eyes Jackalo, RJ the Jank Monarch, Sammy Haim, Serenity Towns, Sir Knight JCB, Skybuster Leo, That One Dumbass, The Wizard Moose, URTV 667 and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders Alpha Sly, Almento 5010, A Random Pup, Ariel Kersey, Beluga Masta, Blitzwolf, Blue Gem, Borger with a Shotgun, Chaz Ghost, Childish Lamar, Dr. Reaper R.I.P., Drakenwald, Eki Bullock, Einzig, Eva Padilla, Hike Boyajian, Herbal D, Inblink, Jester Designs, Kale the Dragon, Kivon Public, King Scarlet Yu-Gi-Oh, Kim Smiley Face, Lemon Yu-Gi-Oh, Lord whoop de doo Manga Pages, Matt Simmons, Mix Boofy, Michael Shimabukuro, Misty, Nitromo, Shizuki Nijimura, Sophie, apparently, Stephen Williamson, Taylor Seymour, The Legendary Raven, and Zal Drekka, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. 
If you'd like to help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh's archetypes, get my videos early, be a part of these credits and other awesome perks, it would mean the world to me if you would check out the link to my Patreon in the description or pinned comment, or consider joining as a YouTube member. And if you'd like to see another video about one of GX's all-time great archetypes, check out this gigantic video where I cover heroes. Yeah, all of them. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye